Welcome to November and welcome once again to the Fox 54 Week in Review. I'm Kenesha Dees. If you're new to this program, we take a look back at the past seven days of news coverage, covering the big headlines as well as featuring the people working to make our community better. This week, we'll meet a young man making autism less of a puzzle for others using his own self-described superpowers. There's a new chief in charge over in Athens. Later on in the show, you'll meet police chief Anthony Presno. And we'll swing by the High Cotton Art Center to learn more about Dia de los Muertos through the handicrafts of local artisans. But we'll begin with the big story of the week, which is happening in a Madison County courtroom and the conviction of a man accused of killing a Huntsville police drug agent. We may learn tomorrow whether La Geromini Brown gets death or life in prison. He was found guilty of capital murder for stack agent Billy Clardy III back in 2019. Every emotion was felt in the courtroom today. Brown's family breaking down on one side of the room and Clardy's family celebrating and hugging on the other. Our Jasmine Bird has the story. It was an emotional day in the courtroom as LaGeromini Brown's capital murder verdict was reached this morning. Now it's in the hands of the jury whether Brown will receive the death penalty or life in prison. Brown is accused of killing Huntsville stack agent Billy Cardi III in 2019 during a drug sting. This all began after a planned drug operation turned fatal. Clardy was an agent on HPD's strategic counter drug team. He was killed when officers were attempting to buy 100 pounds of marijuana from the man accused of killing Clardy. Family members from both sides testifying this afternoon. Clardy's wife, Ashley Clardy, took the witness stand today and says, quote, nothing about our life has been normal since Billy died, end quote. Captain Mike Izzo also took the stand, remembering Clardy's participation in the community during Halloween, today being Halloween, also made Izzo remember this impact. Brown's mother also took the stand during her statement. She shared that the way her son has been portrayed is, quote, just not my son. She also addressed Clardy's wife, telling her, quote, I am so sorry for your loss, but my son did not intentionally kill your husband, end quote. Brown's childhood friend, LaJerica Smith, also took the stand, saying, quote, he's not a murderer. He's my best friend. He's not what y'all make him out to be, end quote. We begin in Decatur, where folks look to spread the good word, continuing calls for justice in the killing of Steve Perkins by Decatur police. Our Ken McCoy has more. I say churches are coming. Church has been the place where the African-American community has congregated for years. One more time. One more the church is the staple of the community. It is, it is the center of the community. The protests of the 60s came out of the church, and every other protest, primarily since then, have come out of the church. Today at Decatur City Hall, the community got together for a little church. Singing. Scripture reading. Prayer. In the name of Jesus. And a call to justice for Steve Perkins. What's going on here today is we wanted the opportunity as the African American community to step out and to talk about our narrative, how we view things, because the system and the process that we've endured so far has not been very transparent. And when you don't get any information, you're left to draw your own conclusions. Many protests have taken place since the death of Perkins, and now the center of the community is taking its place. I have must admit, we were a little slow getting on board because our young people are decisive, they're a whole new generation and they, when they make up their mind to do something, they're, they're very different. And we like it. We like the energy. We like the disciples. And they said it's not going to happen on their watch. So we're now catching up to our young people. Pastor Owen shares why movements like this are important to keep going. We should not be at this point 30 days out. And if we don't keep it going, we don't know how much can be, and I hate to say, swept under the rug or covered up. And we are not going to allow anything to be covered up. And I say that with all due respect to everyone involved, but we want the truth. As I said earlier, as always been said, it is about right and wrong. It is about justice and truth. For Fox 54 News, I'm Ken McCoy. Where citizens and community members of North Alabama attended the People's Town Hall meeting, a meeting put on by Standing in Power, a group aimed at, quote, answering police policy and citizens' rights. 
Multiple community leaders voiced their concerns, demanding transparency from the Decatur Police Department in the death of Steve Perkins. Perkins was shot and killed by Decatur Police in late September outside his home following an argument with a tow truck driver. Since then, multiple protests have ensued, demanding justice for his death. Well, tonight, former Decatur Police Chief Nate Allen and Alabama ACLU attorney answered community questions on minority representation and free speech. We have to ensure that there's minority representation in the finance staff and in the management team of the police department. Uh, so it, it has to be a way to ensure that the police department looks like a community. So if you are in the sidewalks, if you are not obstructing traffic, if you are on, in public areas, you have your First Amendment rights um, to, to share your speech. Last Friday, Aaliyah denied the family attorney's request for access to police body cam video. The letter revealed in part that the agency is in the process of, quote, collecting evidence. Well, Huntsville Police Department got a bootiful start to the Halloween weekend this evening. HPD and the Huntsville Parks and Recreation hosted a Halloween party at the Orion Amphitheater. There were bouncy houses, games, and a trunk or treat for the kiddos to enjoy. The event also had a haunted house, plenty of food, and a vendor's market. I'm a World War II soldier from 1949 to 1944. I mean, five. We, we love everybody, you know, and, and just to have the interaction with the, the, the young, young kids here. Uh, they love this time of year with all the candy that's being given out. Uh, so yes, we uh, just another way that we can contribute back to to the community. Tonight, a Huntsville mother wants her son home and she's doing everything, including a trunk or treat to get his name and image out there. Logan was last seen on September 25th at 6 p.m. in the area of Vernon Avenue wearing gray sweatpants, a blue hoodie and black and white Jordan shoes. Now we're talking about Jamarius Logan. Logan's mother tonight made a passionate plea for his return. The city is quiet. But what they fail to realize is, although this is my son, this is the city's son. My son is the city's son. And it's going to take the city to help find my son. Until somebody be brave enough to step up and say something, he won't be found. So it started with me. I stepped up as his mother because I am his voice, because he cannot speak for himself because he is not here. So here I am. Now I'm asking others in the community to join me in finding my son. Say something, please. Well, a new era has began for the city of Athens. Chief of Police Anthony Presnell serving in his new role, and it's the top cop's first week on the job. Our Jasmine Bird had a one-on-one -on -one interview with him. Here's a listen. Even though you're the chief, it doesn't mean you sit in the office all day. Meet the Athens police chief, Anthony Presnell. This is the first week I've actually been in this office. And for the chief's first week settling into his new office. The transition has actually been really smooth. Chief Presnell had been serving as interim since July after the retirement of Chief Floyd Johnson, whom he worked very close with. You know, I was told when I took the interim position, I could blame the other guy for six months. I looked at him and said, I can't blame the other guy because I was with him when he did it. I'd worked so close with Chief Johnson. We had everything going in a good direction. It's just basically for me to keep now, keep it going in that direction. Another thing he stands firm on is. Even though you're the chief, it doesn't mean you sit in the office all day. You know, I still like getting out answering calls, doing traffic stops, which is what our patrol officers do. I can back, I back them up on calls. So what are some of the new chief's expectations moving forward? Just treat people the way you want to be treated. Treat them right. Do the right thing and treat people right. And that's not the only requirement. I want us out meeting our citizens. You know, roll your window down, wave at them, talk to them. Don't keep your window up all day and just ride around. You know, interact with our citizens. They may not remember the officer, but they will remember your car number. And if they need help, they go call and they go ask for that car number, even though they don't know the officer. And most importantly, we're here to serve the citizens of this city, and I want them to feel like they can call us or call me at any time for any reason if they have an issue. In Athens, Jasmine Bird, Fox 54 News. 
The city of Athens has been annexed again. This time it's approximately 115 acres of land near Tanner Crossroads. Conversation for a potential new hospital in the Limestone County community may be on the table as a result of this annexation. Our Jasmine Bird spoke with the mayor of Athens who fills us in and here's what we know so far. Well, actually, the city of Athens annexed property at the request of uh, Huntsville Hospital Association. Athens Mayor Ronnie Mark says a few months ago, the Huntsville Hospital Association purchased about 115 acres of land south of Highway 31. And if you're traveling Highway 31 south toward Tanner, it is to the west side of that approximately 115 acres. And after the Huntsville Hospital Association purchased the land, they then and made a request to uh, annex into the city of Athens, basically for all the services, including sewer. So we are currently working on uh, getting sewer from in the Bucky's area up toward Highway 31 and into this area. So what's expected to be built on this property as a result of the annexation? You know, it's totally their responsibility as a hospital to lay out the plan. I've seen a draft, but it's changed several times. I don't know what their timeline is. And the city council actually only took uh, charge and responsibility for annexing this property. I reached out to the Huntsville Hospital Health System, but they declined to comment at this time. Mayor Marks adds that whatever they do with this property, health care is key, and he looks forward to seeing what's to come of the land next. I think it's a wonderful location for the citizens of Athens in Limestone County. We're excited to see if they build a new hospital, when they build it, and the capacity of how many beds is there. Health care services is so critical, so uh, we look forward to working with, uh, with the Huntsville Hospital Association when they get ready to move. In Athens, Jasmine Bird, Fox 54 News. All right, well, some good news for Hampton Cove area residents. Ground has broken on the building of the new Food City grocery store right here off the corner of Highway 431 in Taylor Lane. A number of food cities are under construction across the metro area. This one is expected to open early next year. Major partnership and medical emergency response will impact all of us here in the Tennessee Valley. And get this. Hemsey and the Huntsville Hospital System have teamed up. The partnership expected to benefit patients throughout North Alabama, especially in rural areas. This also promises faster ambulance response time, better mutual aid between systems, and closer EMS coordination and communication is what hospital officials hope will bring to the table. In working together, our system was built on, you know, putting the patient first and working together. And this is just another step in that right direction of of making sure we're taking that not only care of Madison County, but all of North Alabama and Southern Tennessee. So nothing's changed with patient choice. It's still patient's choice where they go to. Uh, so this doesn't trump that. Uh, you know, we do have a trauma system and a, and a stroke system that directs patients from a state perspective. But other than that, uh, it's still patient's choice where they want to go to. Yeah, well, the new partnership begins January 1st. <laughs> didn't know it, today and tomorrow are called the Day of the Dead or Dia de los Muertos in Mexico. Several members of the local Hispanic community in Athens came together to create a beautiful ofrenda which honors deceased loved ones. Our Jasmine Bird takes us inside. You know, there's a lot of grief that goes with, okay, I'm going to lose it now. Welcome to High Cotton Arts in Athens and meet store manager Sonia Gordon Mathis, where right now it's all about. The, the event that's going on here at High Cotton Arts is Dia de los Muertos, um, and it's the Day of the Dead. And it is a, um, a festival that um, honors uh, deceased loved ones. Mathis believes this can be a part of the healing process for individuals to deal with grief in a productive way. It's, it's, it's different for everybody, but 
you know, it's uh, it's something that's available, and if if they would like to participate in it, we'd be we'd be glad to have their photograph uh, on the ofrenda, you know, in memory of their loved one. They also have a station for individuals to write a letter to a deceased loved one. Um, and we have a mailbox. You can put the the letter in there, and then um, after this event, uh, we'll take the letters out and and burn them so that they you know, go up to heaven, <laughs> so. Tomorrow is the last day to make your way to see the offerenda at High Cotton Arts from 1 until 7. All are encouraged to attend, and it's also free to the public. In Athens, Jasmine Bird, Fox 54 News. And a dream now a reality in the River City, United Way of Morgan County announced legendary singer Dolly Parton's Imagination Library today. More than 1,500 children in Morgan County are enrolled in Parton's Imagination Library. The program provides free books to children under the age of five in the county, regardless of family income. There is no charge to parents. The cost to provide one child with Imagination Library books, though, for a year is $26. The first book distributed is a children's classic, The Little Engine That Could. And uh, it teaches the parents on how to best read the books to their children so that their children get the most out of the books. I'm so excited that Morgan County is going to be a part of that. I know I've seen Morgan County step up to the plate for things that make a difference in the lives of our children and the lives of our family. And y'all, this is one. Absolutely fascinating. Well, books are typically mailed about eight to 10 weeks after parents or guardians have signed up their child. Registration can be done online or by mail. To learn how, visit fox54.com. Close to 2,000 apartment units have been completed here in Huntsville in the last three years, but filling those units have become a task. And with talks of affordable housing, there could be a solution. Our Ken McCoy spoke with Councilman Bill Kling on his idea. Mill Creek is just one project on the table looking to address the need of affordable housing. But according to one city councilman, all options need to be explored. The purpose, as I said, is to transform, redevelop an area into a mixed-use, mixed-income community. The Mill Creek project, if approved, will be an investment for the city. Right, so the, the investment is, is the investment in Huntsville, so the investment in the core of Huntsville. So the architecture will look like any other new development in town. Yeah. The, the architecture is important to make sure it is sustainable for the long term, because uh, I said this will bring all income levels and all use levels but with any new project, there are a few things to consider. What I would ask is, look at the numbers of the apartment complexes that we have all over the city. There are several newly constructed properties all over Huntsville, and there seems to be a lack of occupancy. But there could be a way to fill those spaces and get people into affordable housing without waiting for Mill Creek to be built. And a question I would ask, with all these thousands and thousands of apartments, are there an overwhelming number of vacancies that would benefit by having people have vouchers to live in these apartments versus spending, you know, tens of millions of dollars of building uh, a new building? Using these vouchers to fill up space will help keep money for other projects. To make sure we're spending the city tax money the best that we can. Uh, the more capital money that goes into these types of projects is going to be the lesser money that we could use for things like new roads that we still need. To be but Kling says he's not at all opposed to the building of Mill Creek. All I would say is that this is something I think we need to look into. I haven't come out and made a decision that I'm opposed to uh, construction. It's just that I want to find out answers to all the questions because, again, we're talking about a lot of money. For Fox 54 News, I'm Ken McCoy has been doing all it can to address the need of affordable housing, the city of Huntsville that is, and now qualifying properties can help the cause while also getting a fresher look. Arkin McCoy has more. So uh, the city of Huntsville continues to make affordable housing a priority and affordable housing for our seniors and our families in ways that we can improve the stock of available affordable housing within our communities. Owners of low income multifamily rental housing here in Huntsville who want to upgrade their units may qualify for funds from the emergency rental assistance program. We were able to leverage some federal funds and this federal funding will allow us to target uh, like 48 units and above multifamily and senior developments. 
that may be aging a little bit, that maybe they were built in the 60s or 70s, and they're in need of some modern modernization updates. To qualify, the multifamily properties must serve as families who are at or below 50% of the area and median income. So the criteria is obviously you have to have a, a, a multifamily product uh, serving affordable housing for seniors and families within our community, meaning that their rents and the incomes are restricted. So those are the, the target uh, units that we're looking to revitalize, reinvest in. And it's not really designed for small properties. We're looking for probably a 48 unit and above. Erwin says while programs like this are helping to address a need in the city, it's more than building a building. Everyone is pulling together. We have a lot of partners that can help us do this, but addressing the overall community affordable housing issue is more than just building units. It's modernizing units. It's actually addressing uh, zoning issues and uh, you know making sure our wages are, are compatible with the competitive rent market within our community. So there's a lot of, of aspects to what affordable looks like. The deadline to apply is 5 p.m. Monday, November 20th. For Fox 54 News, I'm Ken McCoy. Now Fox 54 Top Teacher, sponsored by Calhoun Community College. This next teacher we're about to meet is someone people say is very special. I've seen her in action myself and the way she treats her students is with TLC. She also has a bit of grit prepping her students for the real world. Meet her top teacher from Athens High School, Charity Rogers. Meet special needs teacher Charity Rogers. This week we have talked about creepy animals and what are some animals that we associate with Halloween? Bats. She's been at it for 20 years and at Athens High School for two. My unit is primarily children with autism or they have a lower IQ. Working one on one with special needs students. Specifically, she's a self-contained specialist. There are four of us in Athens City and I'm one of four. Rogers working with different types of special needs students. We work with the students that have multiple physical needs, multiple emotional needs, multiple um, cognitive needs, or a variation of all of those put together. And that's what I do. In the day in the life of Rogers classroom. Functioning chaos. <laughs> but the chaos is her calling. So my mom is a special needs teacher. My oldest is a special needs student. It's why she works with students like JC on. So did mama talk to you about nominating Miss Rogers for this? Um, yes. Yeah, yes, she did. Yeah. So do you like coming to my class every day? Um, yeah. But students like JC on do more than just what's inside this classroom. They do go out to classes with their typical peers. They are with me for their core academics. Um, we do a life skills class. Roger's goal is to get her students ready for the real world. As the world progresses, we are becoming a more inclusive society, and I expect my students to leave me knowing how to function in that world. She really is someone special. Congratulations, Charity. Check out more of the special moments with JC on. Her principals also had some glowing words to say about her. While you're at it, nominated teacher at fox54.com. Wichita State University is collaborating with the Army. To help them move forward their, their research and technology and, and missile defense, aviation. Uh, Wichita State has a long-standing history and tradition around aviation research um, and we have a, an entity on our campus, the National Institute for Aviation Research, and we're opening up an office here to help work alongside the Army here. They also have a, a place on our campus in Wichita, Kansas. Wichita State University President Rick Mama says their campus system has over 9,000 students working with various industry partners, mostly in Kansas, but other places as well. So with this partnership, we'll, we'll be able to have students um, uh, participate alongside, work alongside military personnel, our engineers, our researchers. In Huntsville Commanding General for Army Aviation and Missile Command, Major General Thomas O'Connor believes the opening of this facility in Huntsville really benefits the aerospace manufacturing arena. People can come bring ideas together to uh, figure out how we can uh, create uh, creative solutions to help solve some of our challenges in the aerospace manufacturing uh, arena. And from a student standpoint. This gives them a lab in which they can uh, interact uh, with uh, government industry uh, in a, an environment that allows them to get hands-on experience, which will certainly help them in their, in their careers. In Huntsville, Jasmine Bird, Fox 54 News. 
One local kid is giving other kids a chance to enhance their superpowers with sensory friendly items for children on the spectrum. Our Ken McCoy has more. So when Landon was four and a half, um, we started noticing a large difference between his verbal ability and his sister's verbal ability. And we were plugged in with early intervention with speech therapy through the school system at that point. And she suggested we get him tested for autism and it turns out that he is on the spectrum. Like Landon, children on the spectrum are able to thrive like other children. Now fast forward almost seven years later, he is a thriving young man. He is in his second year playing the violin with the Huntsville Youth Orchestra. Um, he's involved in sports hmm. and it's just amazing to see him thrive. All hours at camp, mm. everyone was snoring. Mm. My dad was having a hard time. I wasn't. I was just still asleep. Snoozing away. Like and what's just as amazing is what Landon wants to do with his superpowers. We would always talk about his superpowers. And superpowers to him was going to therapy. We were playing around one summer afternoon and in his own way, he was like, Dad, do other kids have superpowers? He basically asked, how can I help other kids get superpowers? Landon's puzzles gives children on the spectrum the chance to enjoy sensory friendly items to enhance their powers. We send out a flyer and on the flyer is a quick description on what Landon's Puzzle Pieces is, where the items are going. So if you scan the QR code, there's an Amazon wish list that has all the items that we're asking for. And for Landon's parents, helping other parents brings them joy. There is a wave of relief on their face. And as a parent, it is such a powerful feeling to know that you are able to deliver that to your kid. It is one of the most wonderful feelings knowing that we're helping other people. More details on Landon's puzzle piece can be found on our website at fox54.com. For Fox 54 News, I'm Ken McCoy. Before we put the relish on top of this week's episode, we'd like to show you something neat that happened here at our Memorial Parkway Studios earlier this week. The Oscar Mayer Wienermobile made an appearance outside our building and for a few hours, we invited members of the public to come take a tour of the famous giant vehicular meat product. Hey, I've got to catch up on where Oscar Mayer is now, but we love seeing you folks at events like this, big or small, throughout the North Alabama area. That does it for this week in review. We're on Fridays through Sundays on Fox 54 Plus, available on Roku, Fire TV, and Apple TV, and on our station YouTube page. For now, I'm Kenny Shadiz. We'll see you next time.